This is the Recomputer Jetson 10, and it can recognize people, animals, and objects at up to 60 frames per second while running from a battery pack in the palm of your hand. The Recomputer Jetson 10 is a new product line from Seed Studios that consists of a palm-sized aluminium case that houses a passively cooled NVIDIA Jetson module. The module runs on their custom carrier board and is designed for AI application development and deployment. They've sent me their H0 model, which runs a Jetson Nano module with 128 NVIDIA CUDA cores that can deliver up to half a teraflop of computing performance. It's also got a quad-core ARM A57 CPU running at 1.4 GHz, 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, and 16 GB of eMMC storage. Included in the box along with the recomputer is a 12V 2A power supply, with some options to suit a variety of international power outlets. I'm not sure why mine came with two Euro adapters, I presume this was a packing mistake. The case is a really minimalistic design, with three plain sides and all of the ports on the back. On the bottom it's got ventilation holes around the edges and mounting points so that it can be mounted onto a wall for deployment. One of the sides has rubber feet on it so that it can stand horizontally or vertically on a desk or table. The top is my favourite part of this design. It's clean and unsuspecting, but to access the Jetson module you push up on the silver rod hidden by one of the vents. This pops the magnetically latched top cover off. So it's super easy to gain access to the Jetson module to connect a camera or use the GPIO pins. You don't even need to use a screwdriver. The four magnets hold it in place very well. You can't really tell that the top cover is held in place magnetically. On the back there's a bit of variation depending on the model, but this one's got a 12 volt power input, HDMI and a display port, four USB 3 type A ports, a gigabit ethernet port, and a micro USB port, which is for recovery and flashing the onboard storage. Under the top cover, you'll see the large passively cooled heatsink on the Jetson Nano module that's seated in the custom carrier board. The board has a range of IO. Some of the nice additions are support for power over ethernet, an optional fan plug, as well as control and UART pins. If we take the carrier board out of the case, you can get to the bottom, where there's an M.2 M key slot and an optional battery to power the real-time clock module. Now that we've had a look at the hardware, let's try running some software on it. It comes with NVIDIA's Jetpack software pre-installed so it's ready to plug in and boots up right away. Through Jetpack, the recomputer can run a wide range of fairly complex AI systems, like full native versions of machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and MXNet. So you can use it for things like people, animal, and object recognition, for smart systems like traffic control and vehicle detection, and even in manufacturing and logistics. NVIDIA have really good documentation, and a great introductory series of tutorials to get started with AI and computer vision. The tutorials use a number of TensorRT accelerated deep learning networks, which you'll need to build from source code. But this is all explained in detail, and in doing so you'll learn a lot along the way. I'll show you some of the cool things you can do on the recomputer once you've worked through them. The first one I'm going to show you is object recognition on a still image. So you send a network called ImageNet a still image, and it'll then use TensorRT and the ImageNet class to recognize the object in the image. It'll overlay the image classification result and its confidence in this result. The package comes with a few sample images to try out. So if we run this on one of the sample images and then go to the image output folder, we can see that the recomputer is 99% sure that this is a banana. So it's pretty confident that it's got this one right. I don't like using sample images as they're generally chosen so that the system generates good results. So I also tried this out on three of my own images. I used a picture of an elephant, one of my dog, and then one of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. One thing I did notice when running these images is that they were much slower to process, but this is because I sent the full size original image to the program and not a reduced resolution image like the sample images. You'll notice this with the result text size, it's now much smaller than with the sample images. So ImageNet is 62% sure that this is a tusker, which is sort of on the right track, although this elephant is missing its tusk on the camera side. A 
It's also 56% sure that my dog is a toy poodle. I think this confidence is a bit low because there are a few different types of dogs that it has been trained to recognise, and they're all quite similar. And finally, it's 73% sure that this is a steel arch bridge. So it got all three of the objects correct in the still images. We can also pass the program a saved video or a live video stream, and it'll do the same thing in real time. To do this, we obviously need to add a camera to our e-computer, so let's plug that in first. You can use a CSR camera like the official Raspberry Pi camera module, or use a USB camera. I'm going to use a CSR camera for this example. So if we try this out on different objects on my desk, you can see that we're getting an ImageNet overlay telling us what objects have been detected in the image, as well as their certainty. So it's 98% sure that this is a teapot. It eventually decided that the broccoli wasn't a green lizard, although it wasn't very confident in this decision. You'll also notice that a warning popped up when this live feed started, saying that the heatsink is hot and shouldn't be touched. So it was starting to heat up quite a bit when running the neural network on a live video stream with a screen recording utility running in the background as well. It's still quite impressive that the Jetson Nano is able to run this neural network at around 50 to 70 frames per second while capturing the screen contents. It was also able to recognize this keyboard, a pair of sunglasses, and then my MacBook. It's quite interesting to scroll through the terminal after you've run the network. As you can see some information on the confidence levels of some objects that the network thought were most likely for each sample frame. It also tells you which was the overall best fit decision. To actually use this information in a project, there's a network called DetectNet that'll give you the location and size of the object as well. So with this information you could then build something like a robot car that follows certain objects, like your dog or cat. Or you could build a counter that keeps track of birds or certain types of wildlife visiting your garden. The next network that I had some fun with is one that does pose estimation on people, or just their hands, and this is called PoseNet. This neural network estimates the position of joints or body parts and can again be run on still images, videos, or a live camera feed. This one's really useful for building robots or machines that accept gestures as inputs, like AR or VR systems, and can be used to build systems that monitor human behavior, like counting people who are sitting or standing, or estimating which direction people are walking in. So these are just some of the basic computer vision systems that you can run on the re computer but they should give you a good idea of the capability of the system. The last thing I wanted to have a look at is the power consumption. The re-computer comes with a 2 amp power adapter, which you'd use if you have it plugged into a permanent or non-portable setup. Running from the power adapter with its standard configuration, it uses around 2 to 3 watts when it's running idle on the desktop. This jumps up to 8 to 10 watts when running one of the object recognition models I've showed you previously. 8 to 10 watts is fairly low for a device running on mains power, but you'll work through a set of batteries quite quickly, which is not ideal for building robots or portable devices. So Jetpack has a settings option which allows you to switch the Jetson module to a 5 watt low power mode. In this mode the power consumption of the module is limited to a maximum of 5 watts. So if I turn this on through the toolbar, then the power consumption drops. Mine dropped to around 6 watts. This is probably higher than the 5 watts because I've got a keyboard, mouse and flash drive all plugged into it. You may have noticed that the frames per second also dropped with the reduction in power. So this obviously comes at the expense of computing performance, but still allows around 20 to 30 frames per second and you now get an improvement on battery life. So depending on the project, this might be a suitable option for your application. Overall, I think this is a great device to get started with computer vision and neural networks. It's a neat and ready to run solution that would look right at home on your desk, but still has the versatility to be used in an actual project. 
NVIDIA's documentation also makes it really easy to learn, even if you're a complete beginner. Check out Seed Studio's product page if you'd like to get your own recomputer Jetson 10. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. Let me know what you think of the recomputer in the comments section below. And let me know if there's any computer vision projects that you'd like to see me try out with it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.